Hey, hi everybody. Welcome to uh, Mental Wellness Today presents Recovery Blog with Bill McPhee. Hi, I'm your host, Bill McPhee, and today I have a guest uh, with me, uh, Sachin Wahanwan. Uh, say hi, Sachin. Hey, how are you guys? And I'll tell uh, you uh, why Sachin's here uh, in a minute. Um, but before uh, we introduce Sachin, I'm going to read a letter that I got a question that I got from, from uh, Tracy in Australia. And uh, Tracy says, uh, my name is Tracy. I am a new graduate nurse in Australia. I was looking through your channel while searching, uh, while researching my project, and I've noticed you have experienced depression in your life. Firstly, I love your videos. They are pretty amazing, and I'm sure there are a lot of help for people. The reason I'm contacting you is that I'm currently doing a project here in Australia that I'm quite passionate about. It's basically about consumer perspectives on physical health and implementing daily physical health monitoring in mental health units. Example, uh, example, vital signs, blood sugar levels. By gathering this information, I would love to provide recommendations for nurses to collaboratively improve the physical health of clients. Basically, I want consumers' physical health to be as equally important as their mental health. In saying that, have you ever been hospitalized? If not, I think you can still be of some assistance. I would like your perspective of, on physical health. I have a few questions I'd like to ask if you're willing. Then if possible, you can write the responses back or you can send the video response through your channel. So Tracy, here's uh, your uh, video response to our channel. And yes, I was actually hospitalized. I was hospitalized six different times. I lived in three different group homes and I had a suicide attempt. I was very, very ill. And uh, as we mentioned, uh, Tracy has uh, some questions here regarding uh, mental health and physical health, and, and that's why I have Sachin here. Sachin is actually uh, the Chief of Cardiology of Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center in Niagara Falls, New York. And we're coming from, uh, we're here in Niagara Falls, Canada, and Sachin just works across the border at the medical center as I mentioned, Chief of Cardiology. So thanks for coming on uh, the vlog here, Sachin. Thank Sachin you. and I are good friends. Uh, we come from uh, uh, back, uh, you know, Sachin used to live in Fort Erie. On, uh, we were neighbors on, on the same street, and uh, our uh, our children uh, became friends with each other's children, and they played together, went to school, and different things like that. And actually, today is uh, November the 5th, uh, November 5th, 2014. And Hannah, actually, it's her birthday today, oh, 10, year, 10 years old. Yeah, Happy absolutely, birthday. yeah. <laughs> so, Sancho, why don't you just introduce yourself a little bit about your background in that, and then we'll get into some of Tracy's questions, and uh, we're in good company, so go ahead. Absolutely. Well, as uh, Bill uh, introduced me, I'm a cardiologist. Um, I've trained in internal medicine and cardiology uh, in Buffalo, New York. And currently working in uh, Niagara Falls, New York, as uh, 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 chief of cardiology there. Um, you know, uh, I have not mm -hmm. had direct experience with mental health issues, but you know, in medical school, I have, I have uh, experienced uh, uh, it as part of my training. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I'm I'm sure I should be able to offer some insight yeah. on the physical aspects. Yeah, and you know, as the physical aspects, it's not only mentally, but uh, Practically, because Sajan and I always were on a kick about exercise, and then we'd go, we'd exercise for a while, we'd walk in the park uh, across uh, from our houses, and and that, and then you you've done a lot of you know with the aerobic exercises, and then you you were into a lot of stuff, right? So so it's a battle not only for people with mental illness, and and, and uh, but it's for all of us, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, getting those it's easier said than done thirty minutes a day. You know. It, if you average it out, it is it is really tough, you know, to do that every day. All of us have busy schedules, and you know, yeah. to get that balance is is hard. Yeah. So first thing, so right up your alley, Sajin, uh Tracy asked first of all, do you know what vital signs are? Example: blood pressure and pulse. So let's talk a little bit about, about uh, blood pressure and pulse and vital signs. Well, uh, vital signs are, as the word indicates, something which which are you know, vital functions of your body. And uh, as Tracy had said, you know, blood pressure, pulse are a part of it. Temperature is also part of it. 
then you know you could get into your oxygen saturation that can be part of vital signs too. Basically, essential functions of the body, what your heart rate is doing, that is your pulse, your blood pressure is the pressure of blood in your in your body. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know there are different grades and that's how people are diagnosed with hypertension and all. Right. Talk a little bit about there's always we always talk about two numbers, you know, uh you know, one twenty over seventy or something like that. Well what do the actual numbers mean? Sure. You know the blood pressure um Normal blood pressure should be 120 over 80. Now it can vary between different people. So if people are what we call hypertensives, their blood pressure, if it is greater than 140 over 90, they're hypertensives. And then there are different grades of hypertension. If it is uh, up to 160, then it's stage one. If it is 180, stage two. So that those are different categories. But essentially, if your blood pressure is 120 over 80, plus or minus. 10, 15 points, that's okay. You mm -hmm. know, some people would have low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So it does, doesn't mean that, oh, well, the blood pressure is 110. That means they have something wrong. No, right. it could be entirely normal for that person. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, with, say, your, your physical health, on a scale of 1 to 10, how important or where does it rate from 1 to 10 as far as importance of, of having good blood pressure? It is very important. Um, you know, obviously it has to incorporate all other aspects too, mm -hmm. but uh, um, I think it's difficult to put an exact point on that, but uh, overall, in overall health, well, if I were to put a point, I would say maybe close to six, seven, okay. you know, it, mm -hmm. it is pretty important to have a good blood pressure. Okay, very good. Tracy asked, uh, you know, while I was in hospital, how many times were my vital signs taken? Now. It's been quite a long time since I was uh, in a psychiatric hospital, uh, but I do remember that uh, on a regular basis uh, uh, that I would say that vital signs were probably taken about three times a week, uh, you know, uh, three times a week, uh, and they would come in and uh, do those vital signs. And, um, you know, she says, uh, do you believe vital signs should be taken daily and why and why not? Well, I don't know, Sachi, you know, you know what are... How often should vital signs be taken, do you think, of, of people in, in that? Right. You know, if somebody had, let's say, oh, there are two different scenarios here. So if somebody has a normal blood pressure to begin with, right, and he has a normal pulse rate to begin with, so if you're doing that person's vital signs three times a week, that's acceptable, right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if somebody's blood pressure is up to 180 or 200, then you can't really take vital signs every you know, every two days, mm -hmm. then you got to do it sooner, you know, mm -hmm. maybe every day or maybe even twice a day, depending right. on what their medications are being adjusted right. or not. Right. So it varies. Uh, normal person, I think it's reasonable to do it two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. And how, how easy, uh, how easy is to, to measure the vital signs? Like uh, uh, she mentioned, she says, uh, do the nurses interpret the recordings of the vital signs, uh, the blood pressure reading and I know that you know when you take the blood pressure you see the gauge you watch it and it stops and then it goes down like is is, is there a, a percentage of error or is, that, is it fairly easy for for professionals to be reading that the, those blood pressure signs right well nurses are trained professionals and I think um, uh, all nurses are pretty much trained in, in this stuff mm -hmm. and they should be able to do it and and for that matter interpret it you know they've gone through school and training mm -hmm. and blood pressure and pulse fairly easy to interpret for you know uh, uh, any trained healthcare professional mm -hmm. so um, I think they can be the first line mm -hmm. that they interpret and then if there is a problem then they can go on okay you know we need some treatment or not then right. those decisions can be made right. now I know that uh, you didn't work on psych or anything like that but when you have patients do you when you take their blood pressure and you see it do you tell them and do you interpret that for them? Do you talk to them and tell them sure. right there on, on the spot? Sure, there? absolutely. You know, if you, if you see somebody's blood pressure numbers are high, mm -hmm. then you got to talk to them, okay, your blood pressure numbers are high, you know, this is the medication that you right. start, you know. Right. So you go over all that, absolutely. It is very important that people are aware. Mm -hmm. And for Tracy, I, w I would say this, Tracy, though, you know, um, when, when you're on a psychiatric ward and you're dealing with psychiatric problems and you may be still delusional or hallucinating or hearing voices or paranoid really uh to the individual on the psych ward i, I think that really uh, that that medical that, that blood pressure isn't really that important to us at that time we have bigger fish to fry kind of thing we have bigger we're dealing with our mental health more 
and so we're probably less concerned about our our, our physical health. So I would say that if, if the physical part in a psychiatric ward or setting is, is a little bit more minimal as far as the, the, the blood pressure and the physical health, we're really there to recuperate our, our mental health. And so really it's not that it's important, but it's not a high priority in my opinion. I think you make an excellent point, you know, because you're looking at a short term situation at that time to recover over the acute issues and then you know this the, the physical aspect can be incorporated yeah absolutely you know, as you go along absolutely and uh, she asked another question here uh whilst you were in hospital did you feel although your physical health was neglected why or why not and i think kind of answered that is that sure um when i was on the ward on psych ward you know first of all let me say you know with physical health and mental health the goal is to live as long as possible and as healthy as possible. And you still want to, when you're on a psychiatric ward, I mean, sometimes people are on there for, for long periods of time, and I was on there long periods of time, but I can remember, you know, we'd do certain exercises. I mean, we'd do relaxation exercises. Paul, who was uh, sort of like a, a exercise coach or relaxation coach and, and that, we would do exercising every day, whether it be stretching or whatever, but really, you're not really into it for the physical aspect of it. You're in there because, you know, you may be bored or you really don't know what's going on. So while on the ward, your physical your physical activities do take a back seat to, to things that are priorities. You know, trying to get back into reality, trying to understand your situation at that time, what's going on in your life and everything like that. So, you know, we're not saying that physical health is not important but when you are dealing with psychiatric problems you know at the time it does take a backseat to your to your mental health Absolutely. yeah and it said how often do you have physical activities groups or when you're in hospital and, and you know I remember with them not so much on the war but then later on as I got into group therapy which was very very important I remember uh, that we used to go for walks every time, you know, group therapy may ask for, or the discovery program that I went to lasts for half a day, and you'd have group, and then you might have, you know, relaxation or something like that, and, and different things, but then we'd always go for, you know, a couple kilometer walk, uh, uh, all that, and, uh, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta be, be honest with you, it, it reminds me, you know, we would, there'd be probably about 10 of us, and we'd be walking down to the community in the community, and it kind of felt like that movie, uh, you know, uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with uh, Jack Nicholson, <laughs> where, where he's taking people out on outings and that. And we used to joke about that, kind of funny, but that was the reality. you, you got to have a sense of humor, right? <laughs> uh, what else does Tracy ask? She's asked us, so, okay, how do you think that nurses and other health professionals can improve the physical health of consumers in the hospital? And I think, again, you know, that's just uh, really being, making sure that you're physically uh, uh, physically well. Now, I should mention, too, that, you know what, a lot of times when before you're admitted psych, in a psychiatric ward and before uh, other psych, uh, psychiatric illnesses are diagnosed and everything like that, you do go through a physical or you do take into consideration things like tumors and everything because other things can prevent them can look like psychosis like a lot of times uh, if somebody's dealing with a, a tumor or a head injury can have the same symptoms of a psychiatric uh, illness mm -hmm. and so that has to be ruled out before you start looking at psychiatry issues is that correct is uh, sure. your thoughts yeah yeah you know people could be confused or people could be delirious you know things like that mm -hmm. if they had other illnesses going on so I think that's uh, you know, pretty important to be right right and then uh, she says, how do you take care of your physical health outside of hospital? And then that's uh, a good question. And, uh, you know, that's about physical health and mental health as, as being one to live as long as possible and as healthy as possible. But it is very difficult. I mean, exercising and, and, and you know, eating right and the right portion controls and, and uh, 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 eating the right things and exercise is very hard to do for... For most normal people, I mean, even the general pop the general population in North America, 50% of people are are overweight or obese, and uh, without a psychiatric problem. So you add on a psychiatric problem onto that, and it just makes things very difficult. And and as we struggle with our 
our physical health, uh, it, it's not easy, is it? It's, uh, you know, it's truly not easy. And uh, I would say that in society, in North American society, we're losing the war on health right now, aren't we? Uh, in my opinion, we are. Right. You know, it is, as, as we say, you know, recommendation is for 30 minutes of moderate activity almost every day. But uh, it's uh, uh, easier said than done. It's hard to find the time uh, and to eat right. You know, if you look at the food pyramid, uh, uh, which is out there with regards to guidelines, it's, it is hard to follow that uh, right. with our lifestyles the way they have become. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, whatever we say, uh, 10,000 steps a day yeah, or 30 minutes of activity. Absolutely. And and that, is, that is goes a long way. And the 30 minutes, and we're going to wrap up here in a minute, but the, 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 the thing we talked about, that one video on YouTube that I mentioned on another video, that it's called 23 and a half hours. And basically it's saying walking uh, for 30 minutes every day does a world of good like if you go go to youtube and go to that go to, to 23 and a half hours and it's a, a 14 minute uh, i think uh, youtube uh, dvd on on what the benefits of walking for 30 minutes a day are and uh it's amazing the 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 the, the health benefits you get that and i gotta admit you know as you're getting older uh walking is still uh very important i mean if, if i could get 30 days of walking and be very 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 helpful. I know that you do a lot of bike riding, don't you, Sachin? That's kind of your uh, outlet, your yeah, exercise. Summer, uh, summer time. That's that's the way to go, and uh, I try to do as much as I can. Right. Well, listen, Sachin. Thanks for coming on to uh, Bill McPhee's Recovery Blog, and uh, thanks for that. Thank and you. everybody, remember, recovery is when you wouldn't want to be anybody else but who you are today. And uh, remember. Uh, there is life after mental illness. So Tracy, I hope we uh, answered some of your questions. And uh, remember, uh, physical health and mental health are very important. That's our fourth pillar in the Bright Future program. But again, recovery is when you wouldn't want to be anybody else but who you are today. And there is life after mental illness. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you, All right. Thank you Bill.